Hello kids, now continuation of yesterday's work is as follows. Hope you remember that we were doing binding energy curve and some points related to binding energy curve were already explained by me yesterday. Now I'll give the recap of the last point. Below A equal to 50, the curve does not fall continuously but has subsidiary peaks at A216, 6E12 and 2H4. Hope you remember the reason behind. A216 means 8 protons, 8 neutrons. 6E12 means 6 protons and 6 neutrons. And 2H4 means 2 protons and 2 neutrons. So even number of neutrons and same even number of neutrons. Even number of protons and same even number of neutrons. 8, 8 same number 6 6 same number 2 2 same number this shows that even even nuclei are more stable than their immediate neighbors these even nuclei are more stable in comparison to their neighbors for example helium is more stable than lithium check the binding energy per nucleon of helium is about 7 million electron volt and that of lithium is 5.6, about 5.6. Check nitrogen and carbon. Nitrogen having small value of binding energy per nucleon. Fluorine having small value of binding energy per nucleon in comparison to oxygen. So even even nuclei are more stable than their immediate neighbors. Now yesterday we discussed that heavy nuclei have low value of binding energy per nucleon. Similarly, very light nuclei also have low value of binding energy. Now, what they use, what they do to attain stability. Now, here, two types of processes occur. Heavy nuclei split. Now, when a heavy nucleus split into two fragments, two parts, then the fragments belong to this region, this region of binding energy curve. Check the region which is where my pen is moving. Here the value of bi average binding energy per nucleon is a bit more in comparison to uranium. So uranium, that means heavy nucleus, in order to attain stability, it will split into two fragments. And this process is termed as nuclear fission. On the other hand, if you talk about light nuclei like 1H2 deuteron, deuteron attains stability by fusing with another deuteron nuclei. So here what happened, deuteron adds up, deuteron fuse joins with another identical deuteron nuclei and gets converted into helium. Check for deuteron, binding energy per nucleon is 1.1 but for helium it is approximately 7. So uranium increase binding energy per nucleon by splitting, we call it as fission. Deuteron will increase its binding energy per nucleon by a process called fusion by adding. Now, the curve shows that very heavy and very light nuclei have a low average binding energy per nucleon than the nuclei of intermediate masses. So, if a very heavy nucleus such as uranium-238 be split into two lighter nuclei near the flat maximum of the curve. Now this line near the flat maximum of the curve, it means the two fragments that are produced by splitting of uranium-238, they actually lie in this region for which the binding energy per nucleon is a bit higher. Hope you remember the average value here is 8. 0.5 and here 
it is 7.6 8.5 7.6 difference is about 0.9 million electron volt so i can call it as approximately 1 million electron volt the same is written here if a very heavy nucleus like uranium-238 splits into two lighter nuclei near the flat maximum of the curve, the binding energy per nucleon will increase by about 1 million electron volt. Hence, energy will be released in the process. Check for each nucleon energy corresponding to 1 million electron volt is released. Har ek nucleon ke liye 1 million electron volt energy release hoga. Or if we talk about 238 nucleons, so 238 into 1, that means 238 million electron volt energy will be released. It means definitely this process is a source of very high value of energy, very high value of energy. Hence, energy will be released in the process. This method of releasing nuclear energy by breaking up a heavy nucleus into two lighter nuclei of comparable masses is called a nuclear fission. Now after finishing the numericals of this chapter, I'll be taking nuclear fission and fusion in detail. I'll discuss all these points, all the points related to fission, difficulties in carrying fission, how to carry out fission in controlled and in uncontrolled manner. That we'll discuss in the next chapter. So into two lighter nuclei of comparable masses is called nuclear fission. It is the basis of nuclear bombs and nuclear reactors. Remember, nuclear bomb is a destructive use of nuclear fission. Destructive. And nuclear reactor is a constructive use of nuclear fission. So fission do tarikes istamal hoga. Ya to destruction ke liye ya construction ke liye. Negative way mein bombs bante hain. और अगर पॉजिटिव वे की बात करें तो न्यूक्लियर रिएक्टर को इस्तेमाल करके हम इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जनरेशन करते हैं नाउ व्हाट इफ वी टॉक अबाउट वेरी लाइट न्यूक्लियर अल्टरनेटिवली इफ टू और मोर वेरी लाइट न्यूक्लियर सच एज 1H2 बी कंबाइंड टू फॉर्म अ हेवियर न्यूक्लियस सच एज 2HE4 इट इज एक्चुअली 2HE4 बट यू कैन रिमेंबर इट लाइक H2 एंड HE4 the binding energy per nucleon will again increase and by now and now by a much greater amount than fission process. In fission, energy increases by just 1 million electron volt, 1 million electron volt. But here, if you check 1H2, having energy 1.1 million electron volt, but for helium, it is 7. So, increase is approximately of 6 million electron volt that is a very high value or 5.8 million electron volt so this value this increase in binding energy per nucleon is too much large and definitely this means nuclear fusion is also a very high energy source it, nuclear fusion is also a very high energy source process Binding energy per nucleon again increase and now by a much greater amount than in nuclear fission or fission process. This will result in much larger release of energy. This method of releasing nuclear energy is called nuclear fusion. It occurs inside the sun and other stars and is the source of their energy. So why sun and why stars are illuminating with so much high rate illuminating and releasing so much value of energy it is just because of nuclear fusion i hope why fission and fusion takes place the beginning is clear to everyone and this binding energy curve is also clear to everyone this finishes the theory of the chapter and now in the next video i will continue with numerical portion